Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of it. I am Penj and welcome to At The Gates, which is a game that I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. I've been following this for absolutely ages, so I'm very, very happy that it's finally here. What is At The Gates? It is a 4X grand strategy game set in a time at the end of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is crumbling. Look, even the arms have fallen off this statue. That's how crumbly the Roman Empire is. So there it is behind us. And we play as a Dark Age Lord who is going to unite a number of clans together to overthrow the Roman Empire and become the new power of the known world, which sounds very exciting. Because normally in a game like this, you kind of play a superpower. You know, you're going to play Rome or Greece or the Vikings or something, you know, a big known kind of strong contingent. Whereas in this, you play as kind of just a group of clans at the start. You're not really anything. You're just sort of, you know, a ragtag gaggle of barbarians and tribes who all get together. But eventually, by the end of it, the aim is to overthrow the Romans and take control, which sounds very, very exciting. Also, it's quickly worth pointing out that At The Gates has been designed by John Schaefer. Now, John Schaefer also designed Civilization V. So, you know, he's got pedigree for designing some very good strategy games, which is excellent news. That can only hold a lot of promise for At The Gates. So I'm very excited to give this a go. Another thing I do like, another thing I am fond of, is that in both Civilization and At The Gates, the designer has put their name in the title. I like that. So Civilization, it's very easy. We just go, oh, I'm going to play some Civ 6. Welcome back to Civ 6. That is not the actual name of the game. The name of Civilization is Sid Meier's Civilization 6. And likewise, this game is not called At The Gates. It's called John Schaefer's At The Gates. If you look in your Steam library, you will find this game under J for John, not A for At. And I like the fact they've put their name in the title. If they've worked really hard on this, they've been designing it and planning it and you know getting it all sorted and putting it together and releasing a game, I think they're absolutely entitled to put their name in the title of the game because why the heck not, eh? Why the heck not? It worked for Civ. Maybe it'll work for this one as well. Just before we kick things off, uh, we got given a key to this by the developers. In fact, by John Schaefer himself. So thank you very much, John and developing people. That is very kind of you. So I think let's just dive straight in. We'll dive straight in and we'll get a clearer picture of how this all works as we're actually playing the game. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is choose the tribe that we're going to play as. So there's quite a few actually in the game. They've each got their own little sort of special ability thing. So what do the Huns do? Uh, the Huns' unique ability, they can train horse archers and start the game with one, but they cannot own structures. However, you will notice that from the Huns all the way down to the Avars at the bottom of the list there, they are all locked away. And it says on the right there, indeed, this faction is locked. So to unlock factions, you must either form an alliance with its leader or conquer its capital while playing as a different faction. So whilst you're playing as a different faction, if you meet one of these other tribes, you can be allied with them, which is nice. You go and be their best buddies, or you just go and flat out murder them. And then next time out, when you start a new game, you can choose to play as that particular tribe. However, because we've not played before, obviously nothing is unlocked. So we've got the Goths. So we're going to play as Alaric of the Goths. The unique ability is they start with 15 food and 100 treasure. So the default is 10 food and 40 treasure. Okay, so they start with a little bit more food and a significant amount more treasure. So yeah, <laughs> the Goths have been going around nicking everyone's stuff and doing some good old pillaging. Splendid. Okay, well, let's just get on with it, shall we? Let's start a new game of At The Gates and play as the Goths. Okay, here we go. Early April 400 AD and the game has begun. And let's just take a moment. Let's just take a moment right now to look at the lovely art style. It's a very pretty game. It's like this sort of lovely watercolour kind of style to it. It's really nice. They've got little bits here that look sort of like hand-drawn map elements. It's really nice. It looks like we're looking at an old sort of parchment sort of map thing. It's really pretty to look at. Okay, so let's get on with actually playing the game. Now, I'm going to have to explain quite a lot of things. It's a 4X game, which means it's quite complicated. There is an awful lot going on. So there's going to be quite a lot of explanations of things. Maybe time won't move on as much as we might want it to. And there's going to be a lot of sort of jumping back and forth between topics. But let's just take a look at what we've got on the screen in front of us right now. So up in the top left, we've got three out of 12. And that represents the number of clans that we've got against the number of clans that we can have. And we'll come to clans in a moment. Uh, that thing there with the one with the twiddly arrow means that in one more turn we will get another clan joining us which is nice. Nine is the score so the little start is the score that's how well we're doing. 100 gold we start with 100 gold because we are the goths and we've got 15 food currently and we are using minus one food because our people are eating it obviously and down here 
we've got three units of sheep. Now that is intriguing. So that must be given to us by a particular clan. So yes, let's take a look at the clans then. So this game is focused around clans. Rather than being focused, as other games are of this type, around cities. So normally, you know, you might build a city and inside the city you'll build a barracks and you'll build particular units for certain things. And, you know, the cities hold the banks and the, all the, you know, the important buildings normally go into a settlement. This game is more about focusing on the clans. So the clans have certain roles and duties and professions and things like that. So let's take a look at the clans. So if we press the space bar, we get three clans to start with, the clans of the Goths. So these are currently, uh, as they're termed in the game, settled clans. So they're sat inside our little settlement right now, kicking back, doing not very much at all. And we've got Einar uh, Adalfried. <laughs> the Adalfried, he has a good beard. He's got a good face. He has, and the Theobalds. So we've got three clans, and as I said up here, in one turn, because it's a lovely turn-based game, it's lovely and turn-based, which means I can have tea while playing, it's excellent, um, we'll get another clan, another clan will join. Now each clan has itself a set of a sort of uh, kind of traits, I suppose. So these guys here, the Einar, are afraid of animals. Okay, right, that's interesting. So training time is doubled in livestock, experience gained in livestock is halved, and power versus mounted units is halved, because obviously they come up against the horse, they're gonna be a bit scared. But and they also have bow legged. So they have minus one movement point. So these guys are not very good. They're scared of animals and they've got bandy legs. Right, okay. The Adalfreeds uh, start with four levels in livestock, which is fantastic. Ah, and they add three sheep to our stockpile. Okay, so that's why we've got the three sheep. And they are craven. They refuse to attack enemy armies. The morale is reduced by three quarters, but they do get an extra move point and they don't engage in brawls. Okay. And the Theobalds are independent. So experience gained in all disciplines tripled. We'll look at that very shortly. Training time by for settled professions is increased by half and all that kind of stuff. Never has desires. And eloquent. Minus one turn to train in social professions. No other clans in the tile may commit crimes and they never engage in feuds with other clans. Because yes, of course, the clans can fight amongst each other as well. Because you know, they're all differing personalities. They're all different kind of a ragtag bunch of clans that we've kind of cobbled together to make a force. They're obviously not always going to get on. Okay. So what does all this stuff mean here? Train clan in a profession, train clan in a discipline. Okay, right, buckle up. This is where it starts getting a little bit complex. So there are disciplines. There are six disciplines in the game. If we press that, uh, and let's just pick Theobald for now, we can see the disciplines that are available. So there's honor, that's to do with sort of combat and fighting and stuff. Agriculture, obviously to do with kind of farming and food provision, that kind of stuff. Livestock is to do with uh, looking after animals. Metalworking is to do with uh, kind of gathering metals and mining and processing metals and all that kind of stuff. Crafting is all about building and resource gathering primarily early on. That's to do with uh, wood, so chopping wood and getting sort of timber and stuff. And then discovery is kind of exploration and sort of researchy, sciencey sort of brainy stuff. So what you can do is you can train a clan in a particular discipline. And then within those disciplines, there are professions. So for example, we can't look at it now because we haven't actually unlocked anything. But if we were to train, uh, I don't know, let's say we trained Theobalds in, uh, in agriculture. Let's say we train them in agriculture. We could do that and go, there you go, you've got your discipline of agriculture, which is good, and that means now we can train you in a particular job that is under the agriculture tree, which is this profession bit up here. So that might be farming. So I'm like, all right, you can be farmers. And then another clan might then have a discipline of agriculture. So we might go, yeah, all right, you can also be uh, disciplined in agriculture, but we don't want you to be farmers, other clan. You can be beekeepers and we'll find a place with bees and they can go over and do beekeeping. And some of the people could be gatherers and they gather berries and all that kind of stuff. So under each discipline, there are many, many professions, but we have to unlock them all first. Now these guys, the Ardalfreeds, start, which is their thing there, which is because they are, what's that there, a herder, they start with four levels in livestock, which is very, very good. They've already got livestock kind of sorted. And so the higher the, um, the higher the value of a, hang on a minute, of a discipline, <laughs> this is where it starts getting complicated, the higher the value of a discipline that a clan has, the better they are at doing their jobs. So if there's a discipline of one and you send someone out to chop wood, they're going to be all right. They're going to be okay. They'll be disciplined in crafting and they'll be okay at chopping wood. If you get them up to a discipline of five, 
which takes you know, a bit of time and a bit of resources. You need like parchment and stuff. Then you can send them out to go and chop wood. They will be very, very good at chopping wood because they're super good at it. So it's kind of discipline is just sort of your master kind of class, if you like, and professions are under that. So, you know, that's kind of what you get, got to get your head around. And yeah, there's nothing kind of in the settlement, really. You don't build stuff in the settlement. It's all to do with the clans. So if we take a look around at what we've got right now, so we can see that there's some cattle just there. A herd of cattle. That is a good thing. So we can get some food out of that. Uh, also, there's something there. Now, things with question marks in are unidentified things. We don't know what that is. So we know that there's a, a mineral there of some description. Is it iron, copper, gold? We don't know. We don't know what it is. So we have to send someone over to find out. But of course, we need somebody with the right skills. That thing there, we know that there's a plant there, but we don't know what it is. It's just a thing growing out of the ground and we're not sure. Uh, actually, that's fish. Not actually seen fish yet. Oh, is that not coming up on our map? Have we not quite got that? A vast school of fish. Now, I don't know how to get fish. I'm not entirely sure. Now, what you could do is, what we could do is, the tooltip system is very good in this game. You just hover over that and it pops up and says, there you go, schools of fish can be harvested by a fisherman to produce fish. This is among the largest schools ever found. All right, we definitely want to claim that then. We want to get loads of fish. So the idea is, I kind of see the game being split into several bits. There is an early game phase, which we're in now, obviously, where you have to gather lots of resources, you get your clans together and you try and specialise kind of your clans up and you do stuff and you try and get a load of resources. Because what we can do is, we are not fixed. This is a little settlement, but as you can see, it's just tents. It's just tents and kind of your makeshift stuff. So we can pick this up, if you like. We can pack up all our tents, <laughs> chuck them in bags and move somewhere else. So what we need to do is we need to gather as many resources as we can from one location and then move on to another and another and another until we find a really good place to settle. Now, it could be that we settle just here. I mean, it looks like an okay position. There's some hills. There's certainly some minerally stuff there. There's a plant thing there. There's more animals over that way. So there's quite a lot of animals going on, which is quite nice. So, you know, it depends. It depends how we get on and how we do the exploring and, you know, what's around us. I mean, over here, it might be full of baddies. <laughs> it might be someone else just there. But yes, this thing can move. And eventually, at some point, you have to settle down. You settle down, and that gives you bonuses and all that kind of stuff. But right now, we don't need to. So we're just going to go around and sort of harvest things. So what we need to do is we need to start training a clan and studying a profession. So what we need to do is let's, let's study a profession first. So at the moment, we've not done anything at all. So the professions are just, we're unlocking the beginning points of each tree, if you like. So we'll unlock the honour tree. And then when we unlock that, that will then unlock all the rest of the things that we can learn under honour. So there'll be lots of sort of fighting things and hunting things. Agriculture, that unlocks like, you know, the beekeeping and the farming and the gathering and all that kind of stuff. So we need to figure out what we need to do. And there's a lot of planning involved in this. You have to kind of plan quite far ahead and start thinking about, we've got these three clans. What do you want them to be doing now? What do you want them to be doing a bit later on? So yeah, and I've not I've not played as much of this as I would have liked. I didn't really get that much time to play this. So I'm still a little bit new to this. I'm a bit green. So I'm kind of, you know, playing it a little bit by ear, I'll be honest. We've got some cattle just there. We want somebody to go out and work that herd of cattle. So what we could do is we've got those guys who are very, very good at, at cattle. Where are they? Where are they? You're in here. So you're good at, uh, what's your profession? What is that one called? Clean and discipline. What is it? Livestock. So how about, because they've already got livestock and there's some cows just there, how about we study the livestock profession? So we look at that, we'll unlock all the stuff that's underneath livestock. Also, once you've researched the top level thing for the first time, as it says there, once finished, it provides you a one-time opportunity to give a settled clan, that means a clan that is inside your settlement still, just kicking back, chilling out, uh, two free levels in livestock, reducing the number of turns, you need to train it in professions within that discipline. So yes, so the number of turns uh, that you need to train someone up, if they've got a higher, higher discipline, then it'll be quicker to train professions under that. Now, earlier on, did I say that it affects the, how good they are at like chopping trees down or whatever? That might not be entirely true. Okay, maybe that was wrong. Okay, maybe that's wrong, but it certainly does have a bearing. So the higher, <laughs> again, I'm learning this, the higher the discipline, the better it is for things that you're learning underneath that particular discipline. So how about, yeah, we study that. Let's get livestock. So we'll study that. And now we need to train a clan up in something. So currently we're not doing anything. So our settlement can do one of three things. We can train a clan in a profession, but we don't have any real professions yet, except reapers, gatherers, hunters, diggers, wood collectors, and explorers. 
I mean, they're, and they're good. They're all good, useful things. Or we can train them in a discipline. Now, these guys have already got a discipline. The Adalfreeds already have a discipline. So we might want to give a discipline to the Theobalds or the Einars. Okay, so you guys. Training time doubled in livestock. Yeah, so you don't need to do livestock. We don't want you to be moving too much either because <laughs> you are not very good at moving. Uh, you guys, experience in all disciplines tripled, but you don't like settled professions. So you don't like sitting about. Uh, training time for settled professions increased by half. Training time for social professions doubled. Yeah, you don't like being told what to do. We've not really got the best mix of things here. But then minus one turn to train in social professions. It's a bit confusing. Training time for social professions is doubled, but then they lose a turn because they're eloquent. Ah, oh, it's a bit complicated. So what do we want to do? I think we need to get some sort of explorer in place. Some sort of exploring type thing. These guys are good for that, I think. These guys are not good for exploring because they've got minus one movement point. <laughs> so that's not very good. So we need these guys to go out and do some exploring. So Clan Theobald, you can be our explorers. So let's train a clan in a discipline. So Clan Theobald can be Discovery. So Discovery is, you know, it's a bit sciencey, it's a bit explorey, it's kind of the scouts and all that lot. So we'll train them up, and that's all our settlement can do. Our settlement can do one thing at a time. So really, you want to be training clans in professions or disciplines, and if not, you produce some treasure, which is just there. Okay, so now we've got ourselves some sheep, we've got 100 gold, we've got the 15 food, so we're looking okay. Next turn, we'll get another clan, but that is it for our turn right now. So yeah, we saw those, thank you. That's the turn done. That is that turn finished and done and sorted. Okay, so now if we put finish turn, it'll move it on, obviously, to the next turn, which is ideal because now is the good time to have tea and stuff. I imagine it'll roll by quite quick. But yeah, I love a turn-based game. It's lovely. So our food has gone down. Obviously, we need to sort of rectify this as soon as possible. So now, Clan Helmar have joined us, and I can switch a clan's discipline to livestock. So I think what we'll do is, with this, immediately, let's get the Ardulfreeds incredibly good at livestock so we can choose a settled clan they are settled they're still in our settlement now just sitting about uh, we can increase it by two levels can we move that no let's move that the way uh, they can receive two levels in livestock so we might as well increase theirs up from discipline four to discipline six like so yay right so that's that done and we've unlocked this bit here so now we've got livestock because we unlocked the top level of it, we've now got these sub sort of uh, sub professions that we can have. So we can have trappers. So trappers can harvest parchment or cloth from animal herds by foraging. However, doing so depletes the herd much faster than producing them with the help of a pasture and a refining profession like the parchment maker. Or we can have meat cutters. Meat cutters produce a large amount of meat from animals added to your stockpile by constructing a pasture on them. Fishermen. Now that might be useful. That might be what we want to go and do. They can harvest large amounts of fish from schools of fish by foraging. They can only be trained when your settlement is next to a large body of water. I think that is what we're going to do. And it says, if you spot one or two sources of fish nearby, consider training a fisherman, as this can be a great way to feed your tribe in the early game. So that's very exciting. So this means we're not actually training some fishermen. We're training the profession of fishermen that we then, when it's researched, when we've figured out how to do fishing, we can then apply that to a clan. So that's what you kind of have to get your head around in this game. You're not building units as such. These are all sort of skills that clans can then be sort of given and they go away and do that particular job. And then you can always change it. So, you know, if we ex sort of go through all the fish, we might go, mm, yeah, all the fish are gone. All right, become a trapper. There you go. But I think right now, let's get fishermen. Let's do that. That'll take three turns to get that profession. And now we need to train a clan. Now what we could do is, we've got these guys now. They are trained up in Discovery. So we could now go forth and if we say, okay, profession-wise, Explorers. Explorers excel at discovering any opportunities or threats that are nearby. They can cross rough terrain like hills and forests, are the only profession which can explore deserted locations. So yeah, sometimes you find stuff like deserted village or deserted fortress or something, and they can go in and they get stuff out of them. Um, they're also extremely fragile. They can't attack, they can't capture things, but training a class and explorer on the first turn is often a good move. Well, first, second, whatever, um, is often a good move as you can get more information for your sort of local area. So let's get explorers and make the Theobalds explorers. Now, here we go. This is a good example of this. If we were to train the Heimars, Helmars, it would take 
four turns for them to become explorers because they've got no sort of sets of skills as such. Um, the Einars and the Adelfreeds would take two turns because they're not proficient in it, if you like. Whereas these guys, the Theobalds, because they've been trained in discovery discipline, so they've got the discovery discipline, and Explorers is a discovery discipline prof uh, profession. <laughs> Again, it's getting a bit complicated. It means it only takes them one turn. So we'll do that to them. They can become our Explorers, which is jolly exciting. Okay, and a new clan has joined. Hello, so the Hellmars. So you are stubborn, plus two additional turns to train when switching disciplines. Okay, so we went basically don't want to switch their disciplines around. Um, might very rarely engage in a mild feud if there's another clan and might extremely rarely engage in brawls. So yeah, of course, yeah, the clans fight each other. The clans do fight each other. So we have to be wary of that. And they've got plus one vision range. Ah, now that's interesting. That might be also good for a uh, sort of scout type class. Okay, interesting. Right, finish our turn. Another thing that we haven't really touched upon at the moment is that clans can also have desires. So they might get some desire. So I think might pop up saying, hello, we don't want to be in a settled profession. You know, we don't want to be in a profession that means we sit about all day in the camp. We want to be in a profession that moves around. And currently we're, you know, sitting about. We don't like it. If you don't do that within a year, we're going to get grumpy. And then we start getting all miserable and they start kicking up a fuss. So, yeah, we get these desires as well, which we have to sort of take care of. So these are the explorers. We've now trained the Theobald clan in exploring and they can move around they've got three move points so where should we move them to i think let's go over there let's see where what these sort of animals are like It'd be very useful so yeah so we can move here pretty freely and then we can move into these red bits but it does take a bit of effort it costs only it says oh it says costs only one movement point to enter these values are modified when a grass tile also contains rough terrain like a forest or a hill so i think we can move into there but that's the end of our move. Okay, so they're not claimed by anybody. There's just two sources of animals out there. That could be very, very useful to go and hunt those things. That would be very useful. Okay, right. A new clan has joined. The Gear Holds. Okay, we're moving in. For how long? Indefinitely. So, have your clans moved their tents away from that spot right there? Yes, that one with a nice view. We'll be settling down there. Okay, right. You guys seem like idiots. So you're perceptive. Plus one vision range again, another one of them. But they are also demanding. Likelihood of having desires tripled. And well, there we go. Immediately becomes angry if a desire has yet to be granted. And they are obsessed with every desire. So if they suddenly get a desire and they say, I really want a job that involves animals. They're going to be absolutely furious as soon as I don't give them that. And then they're going to become obsessed. Now, what does that mean? Oh, the tooltip for that's not very good. Become obsessed with the idea of. Yeah, I know what the word means. <laughs> I understand what. Ah, right. Okay. Now, bear in mind that this is still a sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, alpha beta version, if you like. It's a, not the full release version. So, yeah, there's still a few little bits and bobs there. And I think that might not be finished. I think they might need to do that just there. But anyway, never mind. I don't really like Clan Gearhold. Can we just make them go away somewhere? Can we just send them away? They might be good for scouts as well. Okay, right. So the settlement is idle. We're not training anybody. Okay, I think let's train somebody to become hunters. Because then we can send somebody over here and we can get some food from those animals. So we need to discover what they are and then go and actually harvest them. So go and hunt the animals. Who do want to go and be hunters? I'm not sure. The adult freeds are going to become fishermen when we get the chance. How about you guys? How about you guys? Plus one vision range. The Hellmars. You can go and do that. It's not going to be the Einars because they're a little bit scared. <laughs> or do we do the Gerholds and just make him clear off? Just make them get out of the settlement and make them go away. How about that? Train a clan in a discipline. Train the Gerholds in honour because honour has the hunting stuff in it. So we'll do that. Thank you very much. So yeah, if we just take a quick look at that. Hunters are under the honour sort of uh, uh, discipline. They're under the honour tree, if you like, because they're on the red bit. So yeah, we'll do that. That's lovely. Okay, so now they're being trained and that's another turn done. So now we'll finish that turn. We'll roll on to the next and we'll continue to try and work out exactly what we're doing. And it's turn by turn. You know, I don't really know what's going on still. We do need some more food. That is becoming immediately obvious. We need a lot of food and that is not... That's not going up at all. We've not got any source of food coming in. Okay, you guys, let's move you around. Ah, now, no, you used all your move points last time, I think, to get into those woods. 
So currently you're stuck in those woods, which is a little bit irritating. But next time, move just there, please. Okay, so now those guys are trained in honour. Now let's give them a profession of a hunter. So if we look at hunters, hunters can harvest meat by moving to any tile containing an animal herd and foraging. They can also identify unidentified animals. That is exactly what we want. So you guys become hunters to the gear holds. Okay, so I don't think there's anything else we need to do. Let's finish the turn and see what happens. We're going to get another clan next time out. So let's see if they're any good. We really need to get some food. We very much need to get some food. Early June 400 AD. Now we will get to winter at some point. We'll get to winter and that will be bad. If we've got 11 food at winter time, they're going to burn through the food and we're not going to get anything. So we need to actually make sure that we've got enough food to make it through the winter. I can now train fishermen. This is good news. So let's train a clan. We want to train in a profession, fishermen for the Adelfried. It will take one turn for them because they're so very good. They've got such a high discipline in livestock that training the open to be a fisherman takes a mere one turn. So the Adelfrieds can go become fishermen, which is, that's just excellent. It, it's just brilliant. There we go. So we'll have that. Thank you very much. They can do that. So that is what our place is doing. So we're training those guys. Uh, and let's study a profession. Let's check out the new bods, actually. A new clan has joined. Hello. What are you like? The Rhinolds. Oh, you've got crazy eyes going on. Okay. So you are thorough. Training time is increased by half. Experience gained in all disciplines is tripled. Okay, right, so they're a bit slow to train, but then they do get a lot of experience once they're trained. And what's that? Intimidating. No other clans on the tile may commit crimes. Never engages in feuds. Okay, so they're intimidating. I mean, I can see why they might be intimidating. They've got crazy eyes. Uh, okay, right, so the Reynolds are in. Now, what do we want to do next then? What do we want to do? Clans are idle. Okay, so who are you? You're the hunters. Let's go out and figure out what these things are. Let's go and have a nosy at those. Or do we just go straight onto that and just harvest them? That's a herd of cattle. The hunters could go onto that and start getting us some stuff right now. Some food. We can put them onto there, look. Ta-da! And we can forage. So, again, here's another thing. In the early game, we're going to want to forage stuff. We want to get resources quickly. That will mean that we're going to obliterate this big kind of, uh, this big herd of uh, cattle just there. We're going to basically kill them all. We're not replenishing them or anything like that. We're not sort of uh, keeping them in a pasture. We're just going through. We're roaming around using a bow and arrow, knives or whatever, and getting cows or whatever they are. I assume they're, yeah, cattle. They look like cows. Getting cows and eating them. That's it. Now, again, in the long run, when we've got a settled thing, when we've got an actual proper settlement down, we're going to want to make sure that we can keep things, you know, going and keep sort of becoming a little bit more sort of self-sufficient. So we're going to want to have pastures and farms and stuff. But in this early bit of the game, we just want to forage as much stuff as we can, particularly now because we need to survive the winter. So let's forage just there and our food goes from minus one to plus 3.1. That is excellent. So those guys just wandering around <laughs> shooting at cows. Right you are. Um, okay, can you guys move yet? Yes, you can. Lovely. So you can move there. Ah, this is good. There is food down here. There is wheat. Okay, we'll run you guys down here and see what there is. Ooh, oh, there's other people. Hello, other person. Who are you? You are bandits. Okay, right. There are bandits in there. Right, you are. Right, that's probably not great, is it? Okay, let's study a profession. Now, what do we want to do here? Now, a lot of things in this sort of second tier we're not going to be able to do. These red bits are kind of things saying, no, you can't do that. So, for example, we could look at parchment makers, but then we can't actually train parchment makers because in there it says training cost, 10 tools. We don't have any tools. So the minute we don't want to get sort of too ambitious with these second tier things, I don't think. I think agriculture is probably a very, very good thing to do. So let's just take a look at the uh, tribes we've got. Who is going to be good at going and doing agriculture? So going out, going to these little sort of uh, sites where there's, you know, this stuff here, you know, wheat and whatever, and just getting that and getting us a lot of food. Who's going to be good at that? Um, you might be okay. You've got extra vision. I'd rather have you as sort of scouts or something. Um, or you guys. Training time increased by half. Experience gained in all disciplines tripled. I think let's give it to the let's give it to the Reynolds. There we go. I don't want to give it to the Einars because they're afraid of animals. You know, if they're out here, there might be like a bee or <laughs> some ants on the crops and they're just going to run screaming. So yeah, we won't give it to the Einars. Let's give it to the Reynolds. So um, yeah, at some point, because at the minute they're training, uh, they're training the Ardalfries to become fishermen. Uh, so let's study the profession of agriculture 
And when that's done, we'll get two free levels. So next turn, we're going to get two free levels of agriculture. We'll give that to that clan at the end there with the, with the crazy eyes. And then they can go forth and then get... Uh, they can be whatever they are. Gatherers, is it? And they can go figure out what these things are. Aha, right, okay. Many things have happened. Right, a caravan has arrived. So trader, essentially. Uh, click on that, I believe. And they're going to be buying and selling stuff. So they're selling some salt. I don't quite know what we do with salt. Salt is harvested from salt deposits or diggers. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so it's used by a profession like a briner or a cheesemaker. Okay, we don't particularly need that. Now, honey. Honey is a good thing. We could buy 10 honey for 30. What do we do with honey? I don't know. Um, honey is automatically converted into food when your tribe has nothing else to eat. Ah, okay. Or we could buy some weapons. We could spend 45 of our 100 money and get ourselves five weapons. And you can use weapons to train up different types of troops down the honor tree sort of later on. I think we might do that. Let's treat ourselves 45 gold to buy five weapons. Lovely. We've got some weapons in storage. And then maybe some tools as well. Should we buy five tools for 25 of our monies? So we'll do that as well. And then it's just a case of, yeah, we've got... Food is okay, and that will start mounting up. So, yeah, if we just get, say, some... We've already got sheep. Parchment is expensive, I think. Yeah, let's not do that yet. Let's not do that. Caravans come and go anyway, so that's fine. Right, now we've got these boat guys. So they're in a little boat, which is very exciting. Wee! Okay, maybe they can only move one tile at a time, but they're going to get over there eventually. And these guys, the explorers. Let's go over there. Let's have a wander over. In fact, go up to here, look. Oh, there's some fish just there as well. Let's have a wander over there. Ah, tis the coast. Okay, that is interesting. Right, okay. And now we need to give somebody their free two levels of agriculture. Yeah, let's give it to the Reynolds. Why not? That gets them out of the way, doesn't it? <laughs> it gets you out of the way. So you can have that. So you are now a little bit proficient in using sort of uh, in agriculture stuff. So let's train you to be a reaper which means that you can harvest uh, wheat, barley, and flax, and also you can identify unidentified plants, which is also good for food. So we'll train you to be a reaper. It takes one turn because you're, uh, you've are you got the discipline of agriculture. So that can go into there. Lovely, lovely. And then what profession shall we study? Right. What do we want to do now? What do we want to do? Okay, let's see what we need to do next. Let's have a look at our people. We've got the Einars and the Helmars. What are they going to do? So these are stubborn but perceptive. What have we not actually done? What have we not got? We've not got honour unlocked, so we could give somebody a couple of points of honour or metalworking or crafting. Yeah, we need some crafting. We need some discovery as well, actually, because um, crafting is to do with wood, and we could do with that because we need to cut down some trees. So we could give one of the two clans here that have not got a, a, dis a discipline yet Something to do with, with trees. You could go and cut down trees, couldn't you? There's quite a lot of trees around. So you could just walk away over to there with your bandy legs and go and cut some trees down. I think that's what we'll do. So study of the crafting profession. Yes, please. And then when next turn rolls round, we'll give the two free crafting discipline points to whatever that clan was. What they called? The Einars. I think that sounds like a plan that might or might not be good. Now, one thing I haven't actually done thus far in my uh, short time that I've been playing this game is actually do any combat. So I assume at some point we're going to have to fight these guys. They're bandits, and I guess they may well go around causing some trouble. So we're probably going to need to take them out. The only thing is, I'm not entirely sure how we do that. We'll, we'll come to that another time. It's fine. Let's finish this turn. I want to get those fishermen over to those fish because I think that'd be a massive food boost. That'd be a huge food boost that might see us good for food for quite some time. Okay, right, we can switch a clan's discipline to crafting. That sounds like a good idea. So let's uh, let's go on here. Who are we going to make? The Einars. That was it, wasn't it? They can go out and do some some uh, some good old tree cutting. Although to be fair, they're afraid of animals. I mean, yeah, there might be a pigeon in the tree or something oh no there might be a squirrel up a tree and they're going to be really scared I, I don't think it kind of counts for that but yeah that's more livestock based so they're afraid of maybe bigger animals or that the little thing is a spider if I send them into a forest there's going to be loads of spiders in a forest but do you know what you're gonna to have to get used to it because you guys are going to be promoted in crafting yay so crafting and now let's get you profession wise as a wood collector so wood collectors can harvest timber by moving into any tile containing a forest. 
but not brush, which is similar, and foraging. So yeah, let's get that. Let's get the economy off the ground, as it says. One turn to train them up. It's just a, it's, that just shows the difference, doesn't it? One turn to tra train those in woodcutting, because they've got a crafting discipline. Four turns to tra train them up, these guys who have not got a discipline. So it just goes to show that actually, you know, you want to make sure they've got the right discipline. So let's train them as wood collectors. Yes, please. Let's study a profession. So now we've got these sort of undone. So yeah, loggers, wood bundlers. Wood bundlers double the production of your wood collectors. Now, here we go. This is another thing. This is another thing that we need to actually cover. There's so much stuff. So units can be, I think this is probably a good example for those. There's a little thing underneath the uh, the profession. If a profession has this little cog icon, it means it's active. They are out and about on the map doing stuff. Like, uh, like this guy here, he is active. Like them, they are active. However, some of them, if we go down to the wood bundlers, these things have a little house with a sort of thing in them. They are settled. So that means that they don't go out and do stuff. The wood bundlers sit at our settlement, just, you know, chilling out, waiting around. Then some people bring them some wood. They bundle up that wood. So they just sit about. They don't appear on the map. They're just in the settlement doing what they need to do. So there is a difference between different sort of, yeah, the, the clans have different kind of uses. And sometimes some of them say, we don't want to do a settled profession because, you know, they like to go and explore. Or some of them will say, oh, we're lazy. We want to do a settled profession because it means we just get to sit around on our bottoms all day. So what do we want to get out of these? Potters. Potters, double the production of your hunters, gatherers, and reapers. That sounds absolutely fantastic. So yeah, let's train up some pottery. Let's do that. The only thing is to train a potter. So again, we have to remember, this is not unlocking. We're not building a pottery unit. We're unlocking the knowledge of potters. And then we have to train a clan to be a potter. And to do that, we're going to need 10 timber. So when those people have done their wood collecting, we need to send them out to go and do that. So we'll get potters for now, which is good. Clans are idle. Okay, right, who are you? You're the reapers. So let's go and get you onto some sort of... Oh, do we go from find out what that is? Because that is nearer. That is an unidentified plant that is a little bit nearer to us. Leah, let's put you over there. You can pootle across to over there. You guys can have an explore maybe up this way. I think we've kind of explored down here a bit. We need to know what's on the other side of those mountains. So let's send our explorers across that way. Have a little wander about. Right, boat guys. Can you not go out? Can you not go there eventually? Oh, I think they're going to get there eventually. Nought out of four move points. It must have been... <laughs> maybe it's rough seas or something. I don't know. So let's finish the turn and we'll see what happens next time. We're going to get another clan next time because we've got one turn left to get a new clan. So next time out, we'll see who we get. Please be really good. Eloquent and Craven. We've got a lot of eloquent people. Clan Waldemar. Okay. Right, you guys. Right, can you move to there now? Yes, you can. And can you forage? Right, let's see what this does to our food. Two and a half. Now, of course, our food that is going up is being depleted because people, the more clans we get, the more food we need because they eat more food. So we need to forage just there. How are we going to do this? Let's do that. Bosh. Oh my goodness me. That is an awful lot of extra food right there. Okay, these guys... The Rhinald, uh, whatever they are, the Rhinald Reapers have arrived at this unidentified plant. So let's identify what that might be. So we're going to go and have a little nosy at what that plant is. And then these guys have appeared. So you are the woodcutters. So we want to send you down somewhere to go and chop some wood. So there's a forest there that's within our borders. Or should we go and get that one there? It looks quite nice. I don't know if there's any difference between the types of trees. I'm not entirely sure. Um, do you know what? Let's send them up there. You can go up there, like so, and you're the explorer, guys. You can wander up that way. There's a berry bush. We get berries off of that. And a new clan has joined. Hello, Clan Waldemar. So you're Craven. So you refuse to attack enemy armies. Your morale is reduced by three quarters, but you are a bit better at moving. And you're eloquent, so you're good at social professions. And generally, people don't commit crimes, and you don't fight with other clans. And all they're saying is, huh? <laughs> Just dot, dot, dot. Okay, right. What do we want to do with those guys? What don't we have? We don't have anybody to go out and do any mining. It'd be useful to find out what this sort of uh, stone deposit is just here. We might be able to go and get something out of that. You know, maybe it's whatever or that one there. Because, uh, yeah, I think we touched on it earlier, but it might be iron or copper or gold or gems or something. I don't know. So let's, let's train one of these up. Let's train somebody in a discipline. What's going to be good? Vision range. Uh, turns to train when switching disciplines. Let's get the Hellmars in. 
Nobody's got any boost to sort of anything like mining or anything, have they? Plus one move point. Maybe those guys, actually. You could you could be them. You could go and be the miners. Uh, oh no, minus one turn to train in social professions. Um, I don't think... Oh no, but social professions, if we train them into the mining stuff, the blacksmithing comes later, and that might be a social profession. I don't know. I've not going to play that much yet. So let's train those guys in metalworking. Metalworking encompasses mining and stuff like that. So we'll train them in that. And now let's finish our turn. Right. So what I want to do is, I think we'll play until I've explored over the other side of those mountains. When we've got over the other side of those mountains, we shall probably call it a day and we'll see what's going on. Right. August. It's early August in the year 400. Uh, let's train a clan. So they're now trained up in metalworking. Can we do it again? Can we train them up again? One to three, it will cost one parchment and it will take one turn. Yeah, I think that is well worth doing. Whilst we wait for this potter's thing to be done, because we can't do anything else, we need to research the potters first, don't we? So we want to get potters done, get these guys up into metal working. No, 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 we don't want to do that. Hang on, no, because now they can be diggers and diggers can find unidentified materials. Or do we want to spend some time upgrading them? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get the Waldemars up and make them good at metal working. For some reason, I can't do it. I've got no parchment. Ah, okay, right. Decision made then. Let's get them as diggers. You become diggers. Enjoy that. Clans are idle. Right, so these guys, the woodcutters, have arrived where there's some trees. So now we can forage and we're getting two trees per turn, two timber per turn. And meanwhile, our explorers, uh, let's have a little wander there and see what there is. Uh, and maybe try and wander there as well. What is that just there? What on earth is that? Deserted battlefield? Wow. Okay, what does that mean? What does that give us? Location of a major battle. Old equipment lies scattered about. It may still contain useful supplies and can be investigated by an explorer. Oh, well, happy days. There's one just there. Probably take a couple of turns to get up there. But okay, absolutely. We'll head up that way. Check out the battlefield. Okay, so yeah, that's going to be very good. That is well worth doing. Right, next turn as well, I'm expecting... Yeah, those guys should appear on the map because you are now in an active profession of diggers. You can go to just there and next turn you can hopefully find out what that is. Meanwhile, you guys head up that way. Ooh, hello. Who are you? It's all pink. Okay, I don't really know what to make of that, but right you are. Um, settlement is idle. These guys. These guys just sort of sit in there. Not doing much. Switching disciplines and vision range. Uh, I'm not really that bothered with these guys. Let's train them up in a discipline. Let's give them crafting. And they can be the potters. They can be the potters that then increase all the stuff that everyone else is working on. Because they can make some nice pots. So we'll get crafting. Lovely. And then next time out they can then become potters. Because we've got that researched. Okay. Now what else do we want to do? do next really i wanted to get the discovery tree done as well that would be really good um we need another clan before i want to get anyone at the top levels of these because we'll get the free boost we could just research something for the sake of it what about plowers plowers increase the production of your farms by half it requires a small number of horses what about ranchers ranchers can construct pastures okay or meat cutters meat cutters produce a large amount of meat from animals added to your stockpile by constructing a pasture on them or trappers. Uh, hey, yeah, we could do that and get ourselves some parchment. That might be a good idea. If we do that, they can identify unidentified animals, which is useful. And they can then also generate parchment and cloth, which is useful. We need cloth to sort of upgrade the settlement in the long run. So let's research that whilst we're here. Right, finish turn, finish turn. We've got quite a lot of food. I'm very happy with 32 food. That's very good. 36 food. That is going down a little bit. I wonder if it's because we're burning through that amount of fish. Uh, no, we've still got eight. We've met Alboin of the Lombards. Okay. Uh, you click this notification to pay a visit, but there's no need to do so until the two of you have actual business to discuss. Oh, no, let's go and say hi. Hey, Alboin. Oh, <laughs> maybe you want to adjust your skirt a little bit, sir. Uh, you're greedy and meek. You're Alboin of the Lombards. And that's kind of it. Okay, it's nice to meet you. Greeting, stranger. I seek a fair and friendly relationship with you. Are you of similar mind? It's nice to meet you. Don't kill me because I don't know how to do combat just yet, please. Okay, I want to go to this battlefield. What's that? Is that something abandoned? What's that deserted farm? Oh my goodness. Let's go to the battlefield. 
Among the wreckage, your explorer finds several usable weapons. Okay, we've got 10 free weapons. That is excellent. And I think we can go just there as well. Uh, inside the recently abandoned farm storage building, your explorer finds a large stockpile of food. So we've got plus five food. Oh, well done, explorer guy. That was well worth it. Okay, so the settlement is idle. So let's train those guys in being... Oh, we haven't got enough wood for potters yet. We haven't got enough wood. We need three more turns to go by to get the six wood to have the ten to then train them in being a potter. Okay, right. So we can't really do anything right now. So what we could do is we could just produce some treasure. There's no point getting these guys done in a discipline. I don't think we can, can we? Because we can't get it because we haven't got the parchment because we need one more parchment. So we can't do that. I don't want to give them a profession because I'll have to give them a rubbishy profession that they're not going to be useful for. So let's just make some treasure. Maybe when the next on the... Um, the little caravan comes by, we could buy something nice. That would be lovely. Uh, yeah, I know we're not training a clan. It's fine. We're producing treasure. It's all good. Do not worry. Do not worry up here. Don't stress. Okay, right. Let's just let's just have one more go, just to start the next turn, and we'll see where we are. Because we get a new clan next time out. That'll all be useful. Come on, turn, roll round. So I wonder who we're going to get. Hopefully they'll be good. Clan Nan, fecund and wood collector. Ah, wood collector's useful. That is useful. So maybe these guys, we can repurpose the clan Einars for something else. Uh, and it's a food of barley. Okay. Right. You guys then, forage that field of barley. Absolutely. You're on it now. You figured out it's a field of barley. Forage the barley. Good. That gets us more food. And we get some barley, which is lovely. Right. New clan. Who are you? Clan Nan. Thanks for inviting us, but I must warn you that we need some extra space. We've got some new additions on the way. Okay, right, yes, indeed. Family growth rate increased by half. Resource production increased by a quarter. Resource production from constructed structures. We don't have any of those yet. And maximum health increased by half. Right, okay. And they are wood collectors. They start in the wood collector profession. And they have the discipline of crafting. Okay. So where are those guys then? We want them to get out there and do some stuff. Where are you? How can we make you... There you go. Leave there. So you guys, you might as well go out and do some wood chopping as well. There you go. You. Go to there. And next time, you might as well do some wood chopping because it makes sense. Right. Uh, you guys, identify the... Did you not identify the deposit before? Oh, no. That was those guys, was it? So now the diggers have arrived here. I thought I told you to identify the deposit just there. I thought we'd already been doing this, but okay. They can try and identify what that deposit might be. Uh, let's have a chat to the caravan. Has it got anything we want to buy? Parchment could be quite useful. Should we buy five parchment for 30? It might help in the long run. Yeah, let's buy five parchment. Absolutely. Lovely. Um, and what about some timber? Now nah, we're going to get enough timber. We're going to have two lots of people doing timber. Um, so, we're not training a clan. It's these guys again who we've given to the crafter, but we still haven't got enough enough wood. So let's produce some treasure for now. And you know what? I think that'll do for now. I mean, it's it's been a bit talky and there's not been much going on, but it's very hard to explain all the stuff that's going on because obviously it's a brand new game. It's a 4X game. There is an awful lot going into it. And yeah, it, it's, it's an odd thing to have to try and differentiate between other games of this type because other games are very city and individual unit based so yeah as we said before the city will have things in like the granary and the walls and the bank and you know the palaces and all that kind of stuff whereas this doesn't really kind of work like that each clan is your kind of important kind of resource and you can train them to do different things as and when you need to which is very very exciting i like that it's a it's a good concept so we've got this far we've got these guys Six turns until another clan appears. So that's not so bad. You know, yeah, we need to get some more food in, I think. We might need to get some more people in. So another another hunter might no, be no bad thing. So who are those guys? You are the afraid of animals ones. But what we could do is... We could. When these guys are starting chopping trees down, because they're already wood collectors, they can chop down those trees. We'll stop those chopping down trees. Bring them back to the uh, encampment change their discipline into honour, turn them into hunters and go out here and get them doing some hunting of these animals over this way to, to get more food. That's what I think we'll do. Now, I know it just says scared of animals. <laughs> They're only afraid of animals that are domesticated, I think. 
any kind of wild things roaming around, they're absolutely fine with. So I think we'll do that. Hopefully we'll figure out what this stone thing is. There's loads of fish in there. And yeah, it's all going, it's all going all right. I think it's going okay. Now, of course, I've never really played much of this, so it, I might be doing terribly. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems to me like we've got a happy little settlement and everybody seems to be relatively content within, you know, what jobs we've assigned them to do. So hopefully you are enjoying this. If you are, then let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you want to see more? Do you want to see less? Please just inform me of what you think. Um, I'm going to have at least another part of this just because I want to dig a little bit further into it just to explore more of what's going on. And yeah, and as well, explore over here as well. So explore the game, but also explore the map a bit more because I don't really know still what's going on. I've not really got out this early game yet. Although I do feel the game is quite, it, you know, it's a slow, sort of deliberate kind of game. So if it were to be a series, it would be quite a long one, I imagine. But yeah, let me know what you think. Also, if you did enjoy it, please do leave a like. It's useful to get those likes just to see what is going down well on the channel and kind of what isn't. So yeah, it's always useful. And if you're not already, please do subscribe just to keep up to date with how we get on in At The Gates. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. The City of Cupboard, it can be full of geeks, very loyal geeks to me. It's this sort of stripy hill. That's interesting. Oh, a stripy mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. It really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire.